Hello and welcome my fellow math mortals and science mortals to the deep dive of FISMEC 1, the T84 calculator program devoted to mechanics and physics. So the first main menu here is mechanics. We've got kinematics, dynamics, work energy, and a more menu, um, just so you see what the more menu looks like. It's uh, the Mord Grav. Again, I made a joke about that guy being some Eastern European. And you guys are going to flame me in the comments for this. But watch, I'm going to meet this guy one day, Mord Grav from like Serbia. And we're going to take a selfie and I'll be vindicated. Um, but we've got the momentum rotational gravitational there. So we're going to uh, rerun this thing. Let's go to kinematics to start off with. And seeing the kinematics equations, we've got three options here. 1D motion, projectile motion, which is like 2D motion, and then circular motion. So let's go to the 1D motion. And then we've got V. Oh, and these are just all those, like the four king of 1D motion equations. But let's go into them. Okay, we've got V equals V sub zero plus AT. I can't do a sub zero here, so just forgive me there. Um, so V is final velocity, V sub O or V sub zero is initial velocity. Now, some of you guys might know this as V sub I for the initial velocity. It's not worth starting a war over, just kind of adapt. Okay, so V I is also V O. Okay, and then A is acceleration and T is time. I'll go again to the kinematics of the 1D uh, equations. We're going to do option two here. S equals S sub zero plus V sub zero times T plus one half times A T squared. That's T raised to the two, that's T squared. And then these things that look like bug splatters or something from a throwback uh, Space Invaders game, these are asterisks uh, meant to denote uh, multiplication here. So we S is displacement. I, just, I can't speak English, it's my first language. S is displacement. It's uh, also known as distance. Some of you guys might call it distance and even use a D for that. Um, S sub zero is initial displacement. V sub zero is initial velocity. A is acceleration. And T is time. So beautiful. Let's go again to the uh, 1D motion. We'll do option three here. So we got V squared equals V sub zero squared plus 2A times the quantity S minus S sub zero. So V here is the final velocity. I could have made it VF, but I didn't want to clutter it up too many with uh, letters all over the place. And we got V sub zero is initial velocity, A is acceleration, S is displacement, and S sub zero is initial displacement. So we go on, kinematics again, and then we're going to go to option four. S equals S sub zero plus one half times quantity, V sub O plus V times T. So here, S is the displacement, S sub zero, initial displacement, V sub zero, initial velocity, V is the final velocity, and T is time. So we've done all the kinematic 1D. Let's go to the projectile motion. So we've got our basic seven here, and we'll walk through these. So V sub X is V sub zero times cosine theta. V sub X is your horizontal velocity. V sub zero is initial velocity. And theta is your launch angle, so that's cosine theta there, because I think they're trying to get the uh, horizontal component of that. So then we go again to kinematics with projectile motion, and now we're in option two. We've got V sub Y is V sub O times sine theta minus G times T. So V sub Y is a vertical velocity at time T, and then V sub zero, or V sub O, is initial velocity, theta is a launch angle, G is acceleration due to gravity. Now, look, okay, most humans are going to write 9.8 meters per second squared. If you want to be more precise, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. For some reason, you have lost your mind in AP physics and like, oh, we're just going to round it to 10. No idea. No idea why you guys do that. Um, tease time. I'll, I'll leave it alone. Flame me in the comments, if you will, about that. Um, we're going to go to uh, projectile motion again. And then we're going to do... Uh, three here, I think, right? Um, we got X is V sub zero times cosine theta times T. X is horizontal displacement. V sub zero is initial velocity. Theta is the launch angle and T is time. And then we're gonna do that projectile motion option four now. We have Y equals V sub zero times sine theta times T minus one half GT squared. So Y is a vertical displacement. V sub O is initial velocity. Theta is your launch angle. T is time. And G is acceleration due to gravity. Again, I have it 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, if you're in AP physics, just write a 10 and adapt and, and just don't hate um, that I'm more accurate than you. Okay, we're going to go back to uh, kinematics and projectile motion. And then I think now we're on option five. 
We have t equals 2 times v sub zero, sub zero times sine theta all over g, where t is the total time in flight or total time of flight. v sub zero is initial velocity, theta is your launch angle, and g is acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Oh gosh, I know, you're just going to hate me for that. Okay, we're going to do uh, kinematics again, projectile motion. Um, I just did 5, so now we're going to do 6. And then we have r equals v sub 0 squared times sine 2 theta all divided by g. r is going to be the range, the horizontal distance um, a projectile went, usually like an artillery shell or something like that. v sub 0 is initial velocity. Theta, again, launch angle. And g is acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to try to say it right. Acceleration due to gravity. Again, um, I had to uh, abbreviate a lot here to get everything on this line. So forgive me for that. Um, we're going to go to kinematics, uh, projectile motion again, the last one, number seven. And we have h equals v sub zero squared times two sine squared theta, all divided by two g. h is the maximum height, v sub zero is initial velocity, theta is launch angle, and g is acceleration due to gravity. <laughs> and I'll leave that one alone. So we're going to go back to kinematics, uh, now circular motion. We should have two equations here, thank goodness. Okay, now some of you may be angry because I'm going to pronounce it W rather than omega or omega, but um, all I had was a W to work with, so I'm using with the Roman character rather than the Greek, so again, forgive me. Um, v is linear velocity, tangential velocity, so if you're spinning something, if it just went straight all of a sudden, that would be the linear velocity, the tangential velocity. R is radius, and W here, I know it's omega, is angular velocity. I sure is the W. And then, so we're going to do that one again. Um, we're going to go to uh, circular motion, option two. And that should be A sub C, where it's the centripetal acceleration. And that's going to be V squared over R. V is the linear velocity, and R is the radius around which it turns. And then, my goodness, I think we're finished with kinematics. We're going to, are we finished with kinematics? We are. Good. We're going to go to dynamics, finally. Okay, so you got our basic ones here, and I know five is off the screen. Uh, forgive me. I'm just trying to fit YouTube's parameters here, but you'll see it in just a moment. So let's choose number one. Newton's first, F equals MA. F is force, M is mass, A is acceleration. Cool, you probably already knew that. We're going to go um, to dynamics again, option two. Weight, I know. You're like, it's <laughs> it's a mass, not a weight. Okay. F sub G is the weight, M, or, or equals M times G. Um, M is the mass, and G is gravitational acceleration. Again, if you're not on planet Earth, this will be something else. This is G, assuming you're on planet Earth for another planet. Maybe you got different um, acceleration due to that gravity. So we're going to go to dynamics again. Oh my gosh, we're going to do uh, option three here, friction. Friction equals mu times N. F is a frictional force. Mu is a coefficient of friction. And N is a normal force. It's usually perpendicular to the application of the force, meaning 90 degree angle from it, um, usually downward towards the earth or whatever body you're on. And then we're going to go to dynamics again. And then we did that. And F net, F net's, you know, pretty straightforward. F net equals uh, sigma F, where F net is a net force and sigma F is the sum of all forces. Just remember that it kind of um, messes with people. They forget to put, you know, horizontal and vertical forces when they do this typically. I think that's all that is there for. So go to dynamics Ooh, a few more times. Ooh, tension in a string. So tension in a string or cable, T equals MA plus F sub G. T is the tension, M is the mass, A is acceleration, and F sub G is the weight. So you get the whole thing there. And then we do dynamics. And then we're going to do uh, number six, normal force. Again, that's perpendicular to the application of the force typically. Um, where N is normal force, N is a normal force, sorry, M is the mass, and A is excel or, sorry, G is acceleration due to gravity. And then we're going to do dynamics. And then we're just going to go to gravity. It's the last one of the dynamics equations, thank goodness. F sub G equals M times G. F sub G is gravitational force, M is mass, G is acceleration due to gravity. Um, if you like it, like it. If there's stuff you want me to add or change, dude, put in the comments and I will change it and update it. And anybody who buys the Fismec 1 will get free updates um, to Fismec 2 as, as I change it. Okay, um, as long as it's just an equation thing, not a solver thing. 
Um, I think we just finished the dynamics. Now we're going to go to WEP, not WAP, that song I can't talk about. Um, so number one, we've got work. Two is kinetic energy. Three is potential energy. And four is power. Let's walk through these. We've got the work. Work equals force times distance times cosine theta. Oh, I gave it away. Um, D is displacement. And theta is the angle between F and D. And then we do work energy power again. Sorry I didn't put power in that uh, menu item there. Um, we're going to go to kinetic energy. KE equals one-half MV squared, where kinetic energy is KE. M is mass, V is velocity. And then we go on again to work energy power. And then we're going to do uh, potential energy. PE equals M times G times H. Um, usually when you drop something, it's going to be... Um, the potential energy is going to be the mass times gravitational acceleration times the height from which you're dropping it. So then we go to work energy power one last time for uh, power P equals W over T, which is work over time. So power is work over time. If you do it faster in a short amount of time, more powerful. Okay, um, we're going to go to the more menu. Oh my goodness, there's more. There's more at Grav, our friend from Eastern Europe. Um, we're going to do the momentum here. We have impulse and momentum, submenu, momentum, impulse, impulse, momentum, and conservation of all that. Let's go to the momentum. We've got two options to choose from. We're going to do uh, P equals MV. P is momentum. M is a mass. V is velocity. That's a fast FedEx truck in the background. That was uh, free. Um, we're going to do uh, momentum, and we're going to do option two there. P equals FT. P again is momentum. F is a force, and T is your time interval. And then we're going to do uh, impulse now. So we've got two sub menus for impulse there. J equals F times delta T. J equals delta P. So let's look at it. Let's look at uh, the first one. J equals F times delta T. J is your impulse. F is your average force. And then delta T is your time interval. So we'll do that again. We're going to do option two for J equals delta P. And then J again is the impulse and delta P is your change in momentum. Sometimes it's a positive to negative change. Like let's say it starts at five and ends in negative two, that would be a total delta P of seven. So just remember to keep your absolute value um, situation going on there. Um, we're gonna go to uh, impulse and momentum here. Option three, we've got F times delta T equals M times delta V, where F is your average force, delta T is time interval, M is your mass, and delta V, change in velocity. Okay, um, I think I just did that impulse. Did I just do the impulse momentum? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Okay, we're gonna do conservation. We got a 1D collision and 2D collision. Um, we're gonna do the 1D collision first. We have M1V1I plus M2V2I equals M1V1F plus M2V2F. What does this mean? Well, the M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects. V1i and V2i are initial velocities, so that's where I get the i from. It should be like a sub i. And then V1f, V2f are your final velocities of those objects, or the masses, I should say. And let's do option two, your 2D collision. So we have M1 V1 x sub i plus M2 V2 x sub i equals M1 V1 x sub f plus M2 V2 x sub f. Again, we've got M1 V1 y sub i, so this is going to be the uh, vertical component, plus m2 v2 y sub i equals m1 v1 y sub f plus m2 v2 y sub f. So x and y are your x and y components. x usually horizontal, y is vertical, and i and f are your initial and final. That's what those uh, subscript are. They're not subscripts here, but they are in real life. Sorry about that. And then we're going to go back. And then um, I think we did... We didn't do rotational yet. So let's do, uh, did we do rotational? I don't know, didn't we? Did we do rotational? Okay, let's do uh, rotational. We've got rotational kinematics, rotational dynamics, and rotational energy. We'll do rotational kinematics first. So we've got three options here. We're gonna choose the first. W equals W sub O plus alpha times T. Again, I'm saying W versus omega or omega, depending where you are relative to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, W is going to be your final angular velocity. W sub O is your initial angular velocity. Alpha is your angular acceleration, and T is your time. So let's go to option two here. Man, this is a lot of Greek letters. 
Um, theta equals theta sub zero plus w sub zero times t plus one half times alpha times t squared. So theta is your angular displacement. Theta sub zero is initial angle. It doesn't always start at zero. Sometimes it starts at like 20 degrees and goes to 90. So it'd be like a 70 degree change. Okay, um, w sub zero is initial angular velocity. Alpha is your angular acceleration and t is your time. And then let's do option three here. We have w squared equals w sub zero squared plus two alpha times delta theta. Oh my gosh. W is a final angular velocity. W sub zero is initial angular velocity. Alpha angular acceleration again. And then delta theta is your change in the angle. So we've done all those. Thank goodness. Now we're going to go to gravitational. We're almost done. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, and again, these programs are available, or this program is available at mcstutoring.com. M is in Mary, C is in Charlie, S is in Sam. I'm sure there's a link in the description. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna do gravitational force, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Famous gravitational force equation. So F is a gravitational force. G is a constant. It's 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared divided by kilogram squared, where M1 and M2 are masses of the objects. So look, just, just a, a free hint here. Make sure your masses of objects are in kg, so you might have to use a lot of scientific notation to get there. And r, you know, meaning radius or distance between two objects there. And then we're going to do a last one is gravitational field strength. g equals g times m divided by r squared. That's a big old g. So g is gravitational field strength. Again, the capital G is the 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Big ol' M is mass of planet, which is probably a big ol' value, and then, especially in kilograms, and then R is distance from planet center. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, the next one of the, <laughs> these will be a, uh, a physics electromagnetic, uh, elect electricity and magnetism. I'm going to call it Fizzy M. So uh, good luck in all your math and science endeavors, and I'll catch you next time. Your source for TID4 calculator programs, mcstutoring.com.